but nope. Ain't no dom fire sale happening around here. You thought like shit, boy. See, cause what had happened was, if they would have told me that Anthony Davis was going to become incapacitated, and that there was going to be a real life starting playoff lineup with Markeith Morris and Andre Drummond, I simply would have not chosen the Lakers to win a single game. That, however, does not take away from what the Phoenix Suns accomplished here. Like, big congratulations over there in Phoenix. First playoffs in 10 years, and you knock out the defending champions, you advance, and maybe become the new favorite or one of the favorites to represent the West in the NBA Finals. There are no asterisks in my world, there are no, oh, what if this, what if that. We can acknowledge those things, sure, but like NBA Storyteller said, every season is just a set of circumstances, and whoever wins that year's championship, they, they just won it. There isn't, oh, it didn't count, or this happened, because every single year that I have ever watched basketball so far, you can go through all of these seasons and pick out one thing that changed the course of that season and led to a champion, every single time. Specifically an injury, you can always do that. We are probably never going to have a season that isn't affected by injuries, so it just doesn't matter. I always like how Steve Kerr put it, that winning a championship is part luck, and it always has a lot to do with who's the healthiest. That all being said, obviously the Lakers stood no chance once Anthony Davis went down. Literally from the moment he left game, what was that, four, you could see a difference. The paint opened up, it was free real estate, they were attacked brutally, and the games really weren't close after that. You could tell that the Suns were the two seed and the Lakers were the seventh. There was no Lakers lineup that could compete with the size of the Suns down low, specifically DeAndre Aiden. There was no defensive lineup good enough. And on top of that, we can finally talk about what we saw with LeBron because I think in a lot of people's eyes, this is the first playoff series where we could definitively look at him and say, all right, he's either declined or something is affecting him. Obviously, it was the high ankle sprain. At times, he seemed simply to refuse to attack, to assert himself. Specifically, last night, he was very passive for most of the game. And when you combine that with the Suns' defense, the way they were walling him off, and not respecting any of the shooters around him because they really didn't have to, well, that's why I tempered my expectations kind of early about an elimination game, James. I said it in the last Barbershop Talk, I simply didn't know if he was capable of giving us something like he always has when his team was near death. You go back even further than that, and I'd been saying Saying if the Lakers are to succeed, Anthony Davis probably needs to be the best player on the squad. Because if AD was here in hole, then LeBron could have picked his spots while Anthony Davis took the lead. Obviously, things did not happen that way. And despite all the injuries where Phoenix gets the most credit for me is just not leaving anything to chance. Shoutouts to Devin Booker, aka Devin Cooker. Every single time it looked like LA was going to make a concentrated run, well, almost every single time, towards it really kind of slowed down towards the end, but everywhere up to that point, Booker had an answer. Whether it was a three or a tough jump shot, just something to keep them in that blowout range, he simply would not let a run mount. And I loved watching every minute of it because I'm so sick of people calling young players on bad teams, stat chasers or empty stat players. That's been stupid to me forever because when you have talented players like this on teams that clearly are not going anywhere, what more do you want them to do? There's a lot of good young talent in this league that if you gave them a chance to contend and you put them on a team with a veteran that can give them a winning direction, you'll see that they actually can affect winning. On the contrary, if you're just playing for an organization that is content to get first rounded or just kind of exist, well, yeah, that player is going to put up 27, 28 points and they'll be losing every year. That does not mean they have empty stats. So Booker and a couple of other young players have kind of killed that narrative this season. And that is who the NBA is left with as we move on to the second round. The Lakers being first rounded leaves the NBA in a weird spot as far as ratings go because the media has spent all year telling you that Jokic is the worst MVP ever and they haven't given enough attention to these players that are not just empty stat players and can clearly affect the winning. They're left with some small markets and cities that a lot of casual fans don't care about and it's a shame that it's that way because what I see here is a fertile yield. I see the future of the NBA and if anybody but the Nets win, some young player about to add a championship to his resume. Even if Brooklyn wins, that gives James Harden his first ring and Kyrie another. Giannis could add a championship to his MVPs and defensive player of the year. If Doncic somehow found a way to finesse this, he would have a ring in his second playoffs. Chris Paul can finally add a championship to his resume along with Devin Booker and Aiden getting one this early in their careers. Jokic, Donovan Mitchell, you see where I'm going? This is, to, to me, this is exciting. If the Clippers were to come back and win, now Kawhi has, what is this, three and Paul George would finally have one. There is a lot for the league to work with. So given the situation, let's now, for the end of this, take a look at the NBA Finals matchups that are left on the board. And the realistic ones. I'm not going to be putting ATL in these. Unless there were multiple injuries to multiple teams, I don't think that Trey Young is going to be making a run through the East. Best case scenario, if Embiid didn't play at all 
this series. Maybe Atlanta could finesse an Eastern Conference Finals match where they'd be getting the Bucks and Nets, and that's not ideal. So not gonna waste time with those. However, every team left in the West can come out of the West. That's where this all gets interesting. I would say my personal favorite on this board is a Phoenix and Milwaukee matchup. That way, somebody's getting a ring for the first time. Chris Paul and his youngins or Giannis. That is a great matchup from a basketball standpoint as well. So potential for an exciting series that could go the distance. Two franchises that we rarely ever see in the NBA Finals. And again, it's not something I think I saw Nick Young say. Yeah, Nick Young tweeted out, oh, nobody wants to see Milwaukee. In the Is this the one he said that nobody wants to see? Yeah, why should basketball fans feel like you don't want to see this matchup? Just because it's Milwaukee or Phoenix, then those aren't exciting franchises. They have exciting players right now. Why does it matter if they haven't been in the Finals in a million years? These are two great and exciting teams. And just a little side note before I go back to the matchups. I did make a video on this around three or four years ago on the main channel i said the nba wasn't prepared to deal with the day that they couldn't just market lebron on top of everything i'd said that once he retired who are you going to be hyping in the finals every year what's your story going to be i think they might be dealing with that right now and maybe that's why a casual fan doesn't feel like they're going to be caring about milwaukee and phoenix even though that is that's a great matchup now i'm not going to ruin all the fun yeah milwaukee and utah does not sound it doesn't sound exciting and i think that would be one of the lowest rated finals in history even though you have you do have some good things there utah's redemption story after blowing a 3-1 lead last year donovan mitchell on the floor all that good stuff and them getting to the finals to play Giannis. yeah you know again people just don't care about the utah jazz in that situation they just don't utah's a great team but again people have not been made to care about their basketball or donovan mitchell and rudy gobert and i really yeah i don't think the story even if it was told i'm not sure the story there is so great either i don't see people hype for milwaukee and utah rivalry going on for the next few years but that is a series that could happen. Especially now that the Lakers are gone, you've got to prepare for the possibility Utah could be making the finals this year. They're one of the favorites, in my opinion. To me, Denver only really has a puncher's chance, so out of all the West teams, if you're looking at them not being healthy and having to reassimilate Will Barton, never going to get Jamal Murray back, so they're missing their second best guy. I think a Jokic finals run isn't as expected right now. I wouldn't write them off, however, and I love watching Jokic play basketball, so if he was a part of most of these final matchups, I, I, I would rather see him play against Milwaukee or Philly, especially because him versus Embiid would be cool. I wouldn't want to see it against the Nets. I don't think that would be any fun. Honestly, I think the finals that you could even get the casual fans to care about probably rest in the Clippers now. Kawhi Leonard, PG, the Clippers and their tragic stories up to now. If they are to recoup in this Dallas series and go on to advance, they absolutely have a chance to get out of the West. Don't even have to worry about the Lakers that they've docked now. And if you put them against any of the Eastern contenders, put them against the Bucks, the Nets, or Philly, yeah, it, it varies in interest. I think the it, it would be least interesting for them to go against Philly. Putting Kawhi back against Giannis would be great. Putting Kawhi against KD and Harden, great. You could give me almost any realistic finals involving the Clippers right now, and I think it's interesting. And yeah, you just you just can't say the same for Utah. Like if we end up with Utah and Philly again, probably a good basketball series, maybe a good basketball series, but one that will the, the ratings will just be in the toilet. You're not gonna be able to get people up for Gobert versus Embiid. It's just not gonna happen. You could, however, get them up for Phoenix and Philly. Once again, Chris Paul getting his first ring versus the process getting their first ring. I think that's great. Also think that's a great basketball series. What about the Nets in Phoenix? Well, already you've got Chris Paul versus Harden, so that would be awesome. However, from basketball, again, I... <sighs> To be honest, I just think the Nets would wash most teams in the finals. I think they would wash Denver. Um, Phoenix could maybe make it interesting, but I think in the end, that would kind of be a foregone conclusion. Same going against Utah. Now, that I'll agree again. Once again, nobody cares about that's in Utah. <laughs> And I don't think that would be a great series either. Like, imagine imagine a Brooklyn and Utah series that turns into a sweep. I, I don't think anybody watched that. So if I'm being completely honest at this point, I am kind of hoping that the Bucks win in the second round just so we can be assured, maybe assured, a good final series or get closer to being assured one. Because I just believe if the Nets are to beat Milwaukee, that means they have already beat maybe the best team left on this bracket. And nobody else is really going to stand much of a chance. I'm not putting a whole lot of stock in Philly right now, given that Embiid is day-to-day 
with a meniscus tear. Doesn't need surgery, but you're talking about me putting my trust in Embiid, who gets injured a lot, and then he's going to be playing with one. I, I just don't see it. Could be wrong, though, as always. No, I didn't forget about the Mavericks. Luka Doncic, tonight, he can put away the Clippers. That would be already the biggest accomplishment in his career. His averages in this series are crazy. He is backpacking when he needs to, so the efficiency might not look that crazy. And like I said, even if it's a puncher's chance, I think every Western team has at least got the opportunity to go to the finals right now. So if you're looking at the Mavericks having knocked off one of the top contenders here, the Jazz and Mavs series is going to be fun. That then gives them an opportunity. If they were to pass that, that gives them a real opportunity to be in the finals. I still think that looking at the help factor, I probably would say they only have a slightly better chance in Denver. But since it's a chance, sure, Doncic versus Philly, I'd have fun with it. Doncic versus Giannis, I would have a lot of fun with that. Especially if you're assuring one of them is getting a championship. Yeah, sign sign me up for Dallas and Milwaukee, I'll take it. Dallas and Brooklyn, eh, not so much. It would be cool that Luka got a team to the finals this young, but it would really, it, it, to me, that would have shades of LeBron going to the finals for the first time. And the Mavs, are a better offensive squad obviously but going against the nets with those three guys and then you're going to be depending on or trying to depend on Porzingis for some production I, I don't know if that has potential for an amazing series so yeah if Giannis could just do us all a favor and yeet Brooklyn in the second round that'd be awesome because then we have a potential for a great finals a more even finals three offensive superstars versus some of these squads I, I have a hard time imagining where that's even going to go six or seven whatever happens just enjoy the rest of the playoffs J just because the Lakers are gone and LeBron is gone and the Clippers might be gone here soon just because all of that is true does not mean we don't have great basketball left the NBA just has not done a great job prepping y'all for this uh passing of the torch I guess and it's sad because it's just a lot of young great players who are going to be the future of this league this is who this is who we're going to be watching Trey Young, Doncic, Jokic, Donovan Mitchell these are the guys that are going to be leading the future and they're here right now so I'm going to enjoy it and if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit the like button comment and subscribe let me know what finals matchup that's left out here you would want to see also hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications every time a new video drops appreciate you watching and i'll see you all on the next one